Hello everyone, I welcome you all to another video by Legacy IS where we're going to talk about a forum which had recently held one of its very important meeting and it also kind of provides an alternative to some of the ways in which United States and other Western European countries are basically performing. It is talking about a specific area, it's, uh, it's relating to an area which is uh, strategically important, which is economically important, and uh, all of these discussions, which are the countries involved, their participation, all of that is what we're going to see in this particular video. So here we're going to talk about the Eastern Economic Forum. So recently, Russia hosted the seventh Eastern Economic Forum at Vladivostok uh, on uh, between September 5th to September 8th. The four-day forum is basically uh, the idea was to provide a platform specifically for the entrepreneurs to expand their businesses in a specific area of Russia's Far Eastern region. So we basically have a forum which is having a very uh, you know, clear business uh, idea or clearly uh, business initiatives. And um, here we are uh, looking at the conglomeration, the coming together of all these entrepreneurs who would like to expand their business in this particular region of Russia. Right. So as far as this forum is concerned, it was started in 2015. The idea was to encourage foreign investments in uh, this particular region, the Russia's Far Eastern region to uh, you know, increase the amount of investments, business that is basically uh, going to be taking place. This forum aimed at connecting the far eastern region of Russia with the Asia Pacific region. All right. So we also have a trying to create a connect here. So as of 2022, as you can see uh, in this particular uh, image as well, about uh, 2729, 2729 investment projects are expected to come up in this particular region. This particular organization tries to represent the economic potential, the business conditions and the investment opportunities that, the, uh, that Russia's Far East basically provides. It tries to highlight the potential of this region and tries to attract respective entrepreneurs who might be interested. So the uh, basically the focus uh, remains in key areas of infrastructure, transportation, mineral excavations because it's rich in resources, construction activities, industry as well as agriculture. The objective of EEF, like I've been telling you, is to enhance its investments. Uh, this is particularly true because it's a very resource rich nation. All right. And, and Far East is also a very uh, resource rich region. It's rich with natural resources such as fish, oil, natural gas, woods, diamonds and other minerals uh, which can be uh, found there. Also a very, uh, you know, very sparse population basically lives there. So the idea is that if investment is going to come, then employment is going to be generated and settlements will happen. And that region is going to be inhabited with people. Currently, it's a very sparse region, very uh, low population, very less number of population stays in this particular region. So the idea is that you start with income. If public is not public are not directly coming there, then you start with uh, undertaking economic activities by trying to show the lucrative nature, the important, uh, you know, nice uh, cities of uh, that particular region. So the region's richness and resources basically contribute to about 5% of Russia's GDP so far. With investments, Russia hopes that it might increase as well. If we look at this particular region, uh, you know, uh, the Russia's Far East, we are basically looking at a very strategic location in a way, uh, which can actually act as a gateway to Asia. So the way in which a lot of modernization is happening in the area of Vladivostok, uh, Khabarovsk, and also Ulan Ud, Chita, Basically, the government is trying to increase the number of investments that can take place. So, in fact, uh, the ideal way of going ahead is first starting with the Asian economies and trying to bring them to the Far Eastern region. So, in this regard, the EEF, uh, the forum is basically treated as an annual gathering and a moment, uh, an opportune uh, moment and a time for Russia to deal with uh, the economic sanctions that the West is leveling against it. So, 
if it's coming at this time uh, and some amount of investment and opportunity increases, it will just take off some of the burden of Russia's shoulder. There are several countries which are there in the grouping, China being the biggest investor in the region, okay, through the Belt and Road Initiative and the Polar Sea Route. That is again something that's extremely important as far as China and its uh, Belt and Road Initiative is concerned. Chinese investments in, in fact account to 90% of the total investments. So it's really putting a lot of interest in this particular region. South Korea equally has invested in several shipbuilding projects, manufacturing of electrical equipment, gas liquefying, agricultural production and also fisheries. Japan has equally made uh, investments uh, in 2017 of a lot of projects uh, almost amounting to 16 billion, all right? Identified a lot of areas and it has encouraged uh, its businesses to go back and start investing, all right? Now, as far as Japan and Russia are concerned in this particular scenario, so Japan is basically dependent upon Russian oil and gas especially after the Fukushima incident which took place in 2011. Moreover, the market for agro-technologies actually create a lot of potential in this particular region of Russia's Far East, which is of interest uh, for Japan. So in this regard, these countries are playing a good important role in uh, Russia's Far East. As far as India is concerned, it also uh, participated in this particular Eastern Economic Forum. And uh, India is interested in expanding its influence in the region. So uh, especially if it's looking at trade, connectivity and investments, then India is interested in this region in Russia. In fact, India intends to deepen its cooperation in areas of energy, pharmaceutical, maritime connectivity, healthcare, tourism, the diamond industry and also the Arctic region in which Russia is a very important stakeholder. In fact, in 2019, India also offered a lot of credit for development of infrastructure in the region. We had business representatives from Gujarat uh, participating in this particular region, especially in the diamond and the pharmaceutical industry. So we have uh, India uh, you know, taking keen interest in this region, trying to expand the potential, trying to encourage its people into the region. But what is also significant is that uh, India also has a good relation with United States and uh, the United States also has a kind of a similar platform which is called the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity. So that is a US-led uh, body and that is also important for India. So it's actually uh, you know, kind of tricky for India to balance its interest in this particular region uh, through this particular forum as uh, Visavi, the EEF, all right? So if we look at uh, this IPEF, it is basically a vital platform for India to, uh, you know, also strengthen its position in the Indo-Pacific region, especially in the backdrop of China's expansionism and uh, groupings with India is not a part of. So through IPEF, it tries to kind of... Uh, you know, leverage the opportunities which are there in the Asia Pacific region without having to be a part of China led uh, organizations or China influenced organizations like RCEP. So uh, it's equally important. This organization is equally important in helping building resilient supply chains, something that was really affected after the COVID-19 or during the COVID-19. So China, uh, uh, you know, had really had a major stake on the global supply chain. So the idea is that these US based organizations are trying to build resilient uh, supply chains. The IPF partners will also act as, uh, you know, new and important sources of raw materials for India and other essential products. So the idea is that India's uh, continued reliance on China hopefully can be reduced and uh, we can find alternatives. And uh, COVID had basically exposed the idea that excessive reliance on one country can really be very, very problematic. So in all of this scenario, uh, EEF and balancing it with IPEF is uh, a, a difficult and a challenging situation for India. How it plans to do that in future, we'll have to wait and watch. I hope as far as this video is concerned, you have managed to get some good insights and it will help you. 
All right. So thank you so much and uh, I'll see you next time.